What's up guys? Okay, so here's part four. This is the last part of this uh, suspension overhaul. And I'll be first starting off putting in the diff right now and then going on from there. But uh, because I had to split these two videos, three and four, um, I didn't get to make an intro for this. So this is the intro for it, but stay tuned and uh, hope you like how it turned out. So I got the uh, diff in. Um, I'm not gonna put the bolt on the axles yet or the drive shaft because if you remember, I had to keep those off so I can get my exhaust on here because the exhaust is kind of a pain in the ass to get in. So uh, I'm gonna put the exhaust where it's supposed to go, not tighten it up or anything like that because I'm gonna have to take that exhaust off down there, um, the mid portion of it, so I can clean up the transmission and clean up all down there because I'm also doing the uh, transmission bushing. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna do that first and then I'll put the axles or bolt the axles in and bolt the dry shaft in. So exhaust first. But as you saw, you can get this in by yourself. Um, it's kind of difficult, but uh, it is doable. And also too, with this mount, um, the, tolerances, the tolerances for these bolts right here, for that guy and the other one on the other side, to actually fit through the hole of, the, of this big box were too tight so I did have to take a grinding stone and just slightly grind in the holes to make them a little bit bigger and it fit on perfectly. Um, that's you know that's always expected of stuff like this uh, so you might have to just modify it just a tad bit but literally all I used was that Roby drill right there and then the uh, sand or yeah the sanding stone or grinding stone or whatever you want to call it. But just do both holes just slightly if it's a problem for you, and then this will go in perfectly. But um, it's pretty solid in there though right now, which is good. So I'm gonna do the exhaust, and then uh, I'll do the axles and drive shaft, and then uh, we'll continue on the rest of it. Okay, so I got the exhaust back in. It was pretty easy. Um, you just gotta rotate it correctly to get it in there, but. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it loose like this for right now. Um, it's only sex this is gonna be like the eyesore of this whole thing, but that's okay because I'm gonna get a new exhaust soon anyways. So it'll look much better later on. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna put an axle bolt. Um, just make sure you put Loctite with them and then torque them to the correct spec. Uh, I don't have the spec on me, but I'm gonna look obviously and then I'll let you know when I get done.
Okay, here's a little update. So, um, I got everything back in where it's supposed to go at. All the bolts are all torqued down. Everything's back where it's supposed to be at. Uh, I did have to get a new driver's side axle because the axle, um, on the part right here where it goes to the hub, um, basically the plate that covered here, let me show you on the actual axle. <laughs> okay, so basically behind this plate right here, uh, there's supposed to be six ball bearings in there. So it helps it, you know, rotate so it doesn't bind up and everything like that. And when I pop this cover off, there's only two ball bearings in there. So it must have fell off previously with the previous owner and then he put it back on and only kept two of the bearings in there and couldn't find the other ones. So I went to go look for all the other bearings and uh, nobody sells them. So what I had to do is basically just get a brand new axle, which is what I did. Um, the only thing about that brand new axle, I mean, it was it. I got it at AutoZone, and uh, it's literally for my car and for the turbo version and everything like that, um, and for my year. But the actual like shaft part of it right here is a little bit skinnier, um, but it did fit in good. It was a 29 spline, just like this one was, same length and same four bolt pattern. Um, I'm not sure why the actual shaft part is skinnier, but we'll just see how that works. Um, so if you kind of see that one compared to the original one, um, but I mean, it bolted right in perfectly. So, uh, we'll see how it works. Um, yeah, everything in here looks super clean. Uh, everything went back where it's supposed to. Um, there was some brackets and stuff like that for the exhaust that I didn't put back in because frankly, you just don't need it. Um, also, I took off the other side of my exhaust, which is right here, the downpipe all the way to where the cal converter is. And in that cal converter, there's actually no cat left. It's just a straight pipe. So it basically all broke and blew out. And that's why this exhaust sounds so rattly because it's all stuck in there. Um, this is the uh, top of the dry shaft, or sorry, uh, the shield on top of the exhaust I took out because I am now cleaning underneath here where the transmission is at. Um, I'm just cleaning up all this area and then I'm going to take this bracket or this mount off right here, put the brand new one on and then clean it up obviously and put it back and then put the exhaust back on and then we'll be done and then all I have to do is just bleed the brakes. Okay, so I got the transmission mount out. Um, I have it up by a jack, the actual transmission. Um, so this is the barbell that goes to the mount. And as you can see, these bushings are literally, I just pushed them out with my fingers. So that was the big clunking noise. And because it was clunking, it also bent the barbell right there. So now I can't put a, you know new bushings in there because it's all bent right there and the bushing won't fit in there correctly. So, um, and also here's the other part of the bushing. Uh, you can see how it was separating. Um, yeah, so that's what was all like the sloppiness of the shifter and it not being direct and uh, just that huge clunking noise was literally this bushing just not doing anything. It literally just like you could push it back in there just like this, but yeah, I pushed it out with my finger. So this thing was completely done for. Um, I didn't realize that those were in such bad condition um, because I was gonna put, this is the uh, brand new uh, urethane mount that kind of replaces this and it goes just on top like that. But now that I know that this is all done for, so you need to get a new barbell and then buy bushings or there's another mount kit that's technically for the uh, 71C and 30A transmission, which is the other two five speeds that are stronger than mine that came in the NA cars and the 87 to 89 turbo cars. Um, I think it will probably work for the 90A transmission. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to do some research on that first. And because if it does, then it literally takes this completely out and only thing it reuses is this bracket right here. So, which will be nice if I could do that because it makes it much simpler 
makes it a lot lighter and uh, it's a lot stronger as well. So, and plus this thing is heavy as shit. So definitely take off probably a good like 10 pounds or whatnot, which is always good to take off weight off your car. So um, I'm kind of at a pause right now on this. Um, I gotta do some research and see if that other uh, transmission mount will work for the 98, um, even though it's 471C and 30A. Uh, so we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so I got the bracket all nice and painted up. So it's all nice and black. Looks pretty good. And I finally got my other transmission mount. It's a response type from uh, Track Pro. Um, this is the mount that I was talking about that it says it goes for the 30A and the 71C transmission, but I'm pretty sure it'll work for my uh, 98 transmission as well. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna weigh it before I put it inside the car um, to see the difference. So I'm gonna weigh the, this bracket with the dumbbell on it and then uh, with all the hardware, and then I'm gonna uh, weigh it with this on there and see what the weight difference is, see how much weight we're losing. Okay, we're gonna start off with the stock unit right here. I'm gonna put everything on a scale. See it's in pounds. So it's 12 pounds, 11 ounces for the stock unit. Um, so it's almost 13 pounds. So now I'm gonna take all this away and then weigh just the bracket um, for these bolts or the bolts that I'm going to need and then the uh, response type mount on it. Okay, so set to zero again. Now let's weigh the response type one. Three pounds, 10 ounces. So that's quite a bit difference in weight right there. The other one was 12 pounds and 11 ounces. So what is that? Nine pound difference, which is uh, pretty good. So once you use this new mount, literally you're gonna save nine pounds off your car. So that's basically how heavy this big fat uh, barbell thing is. So, which is, it's a good upgrade, so. All right, now we're going to put it inside the car. All right, there's another part I forgot to mention. Um, also, where these bushings are at, they're also adjustable. So basically, you can turn them. See, they're kind of like oblong or like the uh, um, where the sleeve is at. is not directly in the middle. It's off to one side. So basically, you can turn this around, and it moves in different positions. So it's all adjustable, which is nice, as well as the top. Top also adjustable. So, which is why I think this will work for my 98. But anyways, yeah, you put these two bolts in, they go right back there. And then uh, once, that, once that is all done, then you bolt it up to your transmission, then you bolt it to your, uh, to your car.
Okay, so as you guys can see, uh, right there is proof that the response type uh, mount that's supposed to be for 71C and 30A also works for the 90A transmission in the 85Z. So, it looks good. Everything bolted up exactly how it's supposed to. Um, transmission, I'm sure, is solid now. So, that's awesome. You know, I wasn't sure if it was going to work because it says didn't say it would, but it didn't say it wouldn't either. And I don't understand the reason why it wouldn't work because they all use the same bracket. So, but now we know. And now you know. So if you ever wanted to do a transmission mount and get rid of that barbell for your uh, 84, 85, 86 Turbo Z that has a 90A, you can use this mount and uh, start this bracket and that mount. So probably gonna feel really good now all I gotta do is put the exhaust back on and put some brackets back on right here that I uh, took off to clean everything and then we're good to go but as you guys see in here I cleaned up almost pretty much everything so um, I didn't clean up the transmission just because that would just take forever and plus eventually I'm gonna get a 71c transmission or 30a in here but that's also the reason why I bought this as well because if it works for this then when I get the other transmissions, I'm not gonna have to worry about rebuying that or buying that mount ever again. I'm just gonna reuse the mount for all the all three transmissions, no matter which one I get. So, but she's pretty much all done. So now I'm just gonna put everything, all the rest of the little bits back together, and then we can drive her. Okay, so I got everything on the car, exhaust back on, oh bracket over there. Um, everything is good to go now, but I'm really glad, glad that uh, that transmission mount worked because if that didn't work, I would have had to figure something else out, which would have sucked, but it worked, which is good. So that's all done. Everything over here is all buttoned up. I already bled the brakes. Um, I did it a couple days ago while I was waiting for that part, just so I'm ready. But anyways, now it's time to throw the wheels back on and uh, see how she runs. She's probably going to feel so much better, uh, especially just handling wise and then acceleration wise. Is, there should be no moving parts anymore. Um, you know, like the diff bushing was broken, transmission mount was broken. Even when I did the engine mounts, those were broken, but that was, I already had those in the new ones. Uh, which helped out a lot as well, but everything's all nice and cleaned up. Uh, the, the subframe bushings are broken. Everything's now polyurethane. Every single suspension bushing and driveline bushings all polyurethane now. So the only thing left I would have to do to this suspension is basically just do coilovers, and that's it. Other than that, it's completely 100% done. Okay, so I do have a little bit of explaining to do since that last clip you saw. Um, I started up the car and basically um, my heater core valve ended up breaking while I started it just from it it was a plastic piece on it um, from starting it you know for 35 years and going through uh, like basically heat cycles the whole time it finally broke 
So let me just show you what it looks like. So basically there's supposed to be a tab right there, just like this, and it broke off and spilled coolant everywhere. So if that's why basically a uh, video hasn't came out uh, in the last couple of weeks because I ordered that part and was waiting for it. I still don't have it because it's on back order. And so then I had to figure out uh, what I was gonna do. So I'd end up just uh, uh, bypassing it and which I will put a video out to how to bypass that. Um, and then also too, I had an exhaust leak where the cat meets the rest of the exhaust. And um, so when I bought a new gasket for that, I was putting the bolts back in while the bolts broke off and I had to take the rest of the stud out of that bolt. So then, yeah, so then I uh, it stripped out all the uh, threads on there. So I had to get a drill bit, drill it out, and then do a, a, a bolt and nut on there and had to get two more gaskets because it had, you're only supposed to use one gasket, but it kept not sealing. So I had to get two gaskets and it finally sealed. Um, there's still a slight exhaust leak. That's just because there's holes in the back of the exhaust that actually I'm gonna go to a muffler shop right now just to get them welded up real quick. But uh, other than that, now she's working and uh, I did test drive her yesterday and uh, she drove pretty good. At first it felt a little weird just because the suspension was all just settling in and stuff like that. So, but after that, then it felt pretty good. Um, the only thing with all the uh, polyurethane and stuff like that, there is a little bit more vibration, but only on uh, basically like when you're first gear and you're going like super slow, like when you're going like five, 10 miles an hour. But other than that, after you kind of get going, it smooths out pretty good. Um, but like I said, that transmission mount actually ended up working really good. And uh, that transmission mount, it's more of a, I would say more of like a solid mount than a polyurethane mount. Even though it has polyurethane bushings on there, it's more on the solid side. So that I think that's where mo most of the vibration is coming from uh, at that low speeds. But uh, other than that, she, I mean, she felt so much better on the road. Like uh, it didn't have as much as a dead space in the center of your steering wheel like most older cars does. It still has some obviously because I still need uh, coilovers on here and the shocks and springs are pretty much done for. But other than that, I mean, she uh, she ran pretty good. So um, right now I'm gonna take her to the exhaust shop and uh, fix those last two uh, exhaust leaks. But um, other than that, I'm gonna be starting a uh, daily driver again. Um, I'm gonna do a, a bolt check too, just to make sure everything's still tightened down but uh yeah so as far as all the suspension this is part three this is done now and sorry it took so long to get this video out i just ran into those two problems that i wasn't expecting to run into so but uh now it's all done and uh there should be some more content coming out a lot faster now that i have this done because uh, i was waiting to get this done so i can put out some more videos but anyways um hope you guys like what you see here um, if you do, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Um, Trying to grow this channel, and uh, I actually hit 100 subscribers, which is awesome. Um, I heard you know the first 100 is always the hardest, so now we got past that. Now we can just keep moving forward and uh, hopefully just get more and more content out there. But hope you guys have a great day, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.